Hey yo, hey everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video, and today we're going to be continuing my top 10 countdown to my favorite good guys, champions, and heroes of all time. Now, remember, this is not who I think is the best, that's who I like the most. Now, today we're going to be doing number 9, and two things about number 9. One is it is a tie between two individuals. Both are set in the same universe and in the same book series. In addition to that, these are characters that may not be well known to the general public. So, just bear with me on this review. Uh, I mean, number 8 next week is going to be a heavy hitter. But these characters are also important to me, so I, I had to put them on the list. So without any further ado, the first person coming in at number 9 would be... Urzra from Magic the Gathering book series. Now, I, I love Magic the Gathering. I played it for quite a few years, and everyone in my group of friends were good, and I was good, and we loved playing it, but I was the only one that read the book series. And I loved the book series. I thought the book series was very underrated and very good. And Urzra was one of my favorite characters from it. Now, Urzra is a unique character, and before I can even get into him, I have to talk about how the Magic the Gathering book series works. There are tons of books, and there's a book for each edition for the card game, and most of the time they all connect to each other. Uh, from the Brothers War up into the Apocalypse Cycle, or the Apocalypse Book, is just one continuous, long, continuity, long story. Um, although they're broken up into cycles, which has three books in each cycle. Invasion Cycle, the Marcanian Cycle, the um, Artifact Cycle, etc., etc. And then after Apocalypse, they would do um, individual cycles that would be disconnected from each other, like the Mirrodin Cycle, the Kamigawa Cycle, the Ravika Cycle, which is the last cycle that I read. Urzra shows up, and he's the main character throughout pretty much from the Brothers War all the way up into uh, Apocalypse, which I think is more than 12 books, more than 15 books. There's a lot of books. And Urzura is a plane walker, and here is a picture of Urzura younger. See, Urzura's star story starts off with him and his younger brother, who is barely even a year younger than him. And they're complete opposites. Urzura is very logical and kind of cold and cares about knowledge and artifacts and tinkering, and his brother is very passionate and lives by his emotions and a little bit more headstrong and charismatic. Um, and they were artifacters, and eventually they came across a power stone. Now, this power stone broken, each brother got one side of the power stone. Thus, they each wanted the other one's half. Um, his brother more so than Urzra, but they each wanted each other's half. Um, thus started the Brothers' War. Towards the end of the Brothers' War, uh, Urzra is able to defeat his brother, and his power stone becomes his right eye, and his brother's power stone becomes his left eye, and thus becoming a planeswalker. Now, planeswalkers are like the top beings in all of, um... Well, pretty much the top beings in all of Magic the Gathering storylines. They're, they're beings that can walk to different planes and different dimensions, and they're like wizards. They have great magic, and their magic usually circles around one of many attributes. Urzra tends to use his magic towards artifacting and tinkering around more than anything. Now, Urzra is a unique character throughout the whole entire series, because Urzra is written differently by everyone. See, because he's so old, and seeing that he can't really, you know, die from age, Urza's been around for a long time, and being around that long really screws with your head. And it's not like Urza is crazy, but it's just he's been around so long that he's just lived so many lives that he just has a different personality each time someone writes him. And he always takes a different form each time someone writes him. Um, he always looks differently depending on his personality. While the character may not be overly charismatic and have too much of a personality, um, he does have a lot of depth and layers to him because his personality switches so much, because he's differently, he's written different uh, depending on the writer. Although he tries to stay relatively the same to his roots, he is written differently depending on what kind of writer. Um, and I just think that's great about Urza. He He's a cool character that he really grows, kind of. He starts off as very, I don't want to say cold-hearted, but not really caring about anyone but his work. And, I mean, he, his relationship with his son and his wife was always quite awkward in the Brothers' War, so... Uh, but he eventually grows, and he sees the greater good, and he eventually becomes a hero, for lack of a better term. He's a cool character, and I just like how he has a lot of depth and layers to him. Anyways, moving on, the next person in number nine would be... Glissa. Now, Glissa is my favorite character from the Magic Garing series. She's from the Mirrodin Cycle, which is a short cycle, only three books, but 
it is a great cycle. It's my favorite cycle. And here's a picture of Glissy, uh, Glissa, which you already saw, but Glissa lives on Meriden. Meriden is the uh, Mirai turned into a planet. Um, and Gliss, uh, everyone on Meriden all have like metal all over their body. As you can see, Glissa right here has it on her arms and her legs. So she really never needs gloves, does she? Anyways, Meriden also has multiple moons, too. Glissa is great because she's a character that had a normal life, at least as normal as a life can ha uh, an elf can have. And then she started to lose her friends and her family, and her loved ones started to disappear. And she's this relatively normal person put in this extreme circumstance, um, fighting off this big evil. She's outcasted by her people, um, she's not trusted by a lot of people because she's kind of set up. And the thing about Glissa that makes her so inspirational and such a great character is she loses. She loses a lot, and that's kind of cool because it makes it believable. Um, she goes through all these hard times and all these losses, and she still holds on, and she still keeps on fighting. And that's just so inspirational, and it's just a beautiful character aspect. She's a very kind, loving character who keeps her friends near and dear. Uh, she has awkward friends. She has a go sorry battery ran out. My bad. But she has a golem as a friend. She has a goblin tinker as a friend. A human wizard. Uh, a lion king. She has tons of different friends that are just different walks of life. And she's I don't know. It's just the thing about Glissy is she it's just she never gives up. And it's such a great aspect because it's very cliche for the hero to always win. And she doesn't always win. She loses. She loses badly a lot. And it's quite fantastic to see at the very end of the book when she goes up against the big bad. She gives up so much of her life to defeat this big bad. Um, so Glissa is really more or less an inspiration because she never gives up despite the amount of time she loses. So with that said, um, those are my number nine picks. Again, they're not the most well-known character, but they're characters that are near and dear to my heart that I love. So with that said, if you feel like joining the top ten character, go right ahead. Uh, make a video, make it as a video response to my videos, and then people that see my video will watch your videos, and who knows, it may help you out get viewers and stuff like that, but uh, it would be fun to see what other people think about heroes in contrast to my picks. So, um, if at any point you want to join the countdown, go right ahead. Next week, be prepared for a heavy hitter, because next week, number eight is going to be a good pick. You're going to love them. So, with that said, this is Andrew saying, peace out for now.